over the next couple of days, I'm going to be checking out this Puerto Viejo de Talamanca area as well as the surrounding areas near it and all the beaches. So to start the day, I'm going to head to a coffee shop to get some coffee, maybe a little bite to eat, and then see what we can get into after there. So I've left the cafe and I've carried down the road and I've come to a sign. So back that way, which is the way I came, is Puerto Viejo, Hone Creek, or One Creek, and Tawita. The way I'm going is a place like Coastlays, I think it's called. But as I'm coming along the road here, there's some horses. There's one there and it looks like a little goat or something. And then there's another one that way. But, uh, I think I've seen this actual property or this house on Airbnb so you can rent it and stay where these horses are. So maybe if you're somebody that's into horses, this would be a place to stay. I'm pretty sure it's on Airbnb. Stopped real quick because there's some macaws up there. So I just stopped real quick because there's some macaws up in this tree. If you listen, you can hear them. Can't see them though because they're blended in with those leaves. Man, I literally only went like I don't even know, 100 feet or something. And there's a tree full of howlers up here. There's probably, I don't know, I can see like six of them at least. Wow, these howler monkeys on the edges of these roads are nuts. You hear them? Oh, one group in a tree will call and then the other group in the other tree on the other side of the road will call back. They got such a deep voice or a deep sound that they make. Also, at the time of filming this video, it is rainy season. So it's not as busy as it would be, you know, in the winter time, that November, December, January, February. But even though it is rainy season, it's not really raining. It hasn't rained since I've been here and I've been here for three days already. And not only that, but I've already seen a few restaurants where they have a sign up that says on vacation until the end of the month. So this is the time when some businesses take their vacation and they, they go away. Look at these little cute fellas we found on the side of the road here. Just grazing. No need for a lawnmower when you got these guys. Take care of it every couple days. Just rode the bike down here to a place called Punta Uva here in uh, this Caribbean region. And the beaches behind me look very nice. I see some people swimming here, which is a good sign. That means maybe not so much riptide and it's safe to swim because some of the beaches along the way aren't so safe. Oh wow, and we got a bunch of howlers up in the tree. Let's go check out these monkeys real quick because I love monkeys, of course. So there's one right above. It's the only one right now. And I think he might be getting ready to move. You can see them there. They're moving now through the trees. Oh, there's a load of them. Look at this one right here. This one's just staring at me. I just found a little spot here on this tree to hang out my bag. A little makeshift bag hanger. And I'm going to hop in the water, cool off for a few minutes, and then get back on the bike and tour around some more and see what else we can find. <laughs> So the water here on the Caribbean side, in Punta Uva, or this region, it is incredibly clear. You can actually see your feet from about chest height, and the water is very clean it seems, and actually uh, very warm. Right now, as it is uh, at the beginning of June, the water feels like bath water. <laughs> like, if I had to describe the temperature, it's probably like, I don't even know, 28 degrees or something. Incredibly warm. Now, when I went to Mexico in uh, the summer of last year, and I went to the Riviera Mayra, now the water there was disgusting because of that seaweed problem. Here, we're in the Caribbean also, but there is no seaweed issue, it seems. There's a little bit of seaweed on the beach, but nothing. Like, you, you don't smell any weird smells. The water is clear. It's perfect. For now, 
I'm gonna enjoy this for a couple more minutes and enjoy some of these clips of what the beach looks like here in Punta Uva, Costa Rica. get back there was some traffic there was also like a control point where the police were stopping cars they didn't stop bicycles but i uh, stopped at the grocery store to get some food to cook for dinner tonight and uh, i think i'm gonna leave it there i'm gonna hop in the pool i'm gonna chill out for a little while as it is already 6 15 and we'll pick up tomorrow and see what else we can get into so i'll see you guys tomorrow ah, wow there's some hills around here well it's about two days later and i'm currently biking my way to the National Refuge in Manzanillo and to get there you just take this main road all the way down on a bike and it takes quite a long time because there's some small hills that go up and down that you have to get off the bike, walk, pedal a little bit more and uh, it's quite an adventure but we're almost there. Just about right here is where the refuge pretty much begins and uh, hopefully it's not too much further because I'm sweating and it's already 2.30, so it's been 45 minutes on the bike. Also, on the way here, I stopped at Playa Costales, which is the next beach over from Puerto Viejo. And there you can see there are actually some strong winds and strong waves. And maybe it's not the place to swim for everybody. The better place is closer to Punta Uva, where I went earlier in this video. All right, guys, check this out. I just made a stop because there are some horses on the side of the road. As you can see here, there's nothing to hold them back, but there appears to be a leash around them, so maybe they can't get pretty far. But man, does that horse right there look skinny or what? Wow, well, it's been exactly one hour. It's 2.45 now, and we made it here to Manzanillo. Now, I don't know if there's like a particular entrance into this refuge, but it's all along this side over here behind the camera. So just going to ride around, see what this place is like. See if we can spot some wildlife. And yeah, I'll show you everything I see. So uh, let's see what we can get into. So all the way at the end of the road here, you just keep going straight. You get to the entrance to the refuge. So I'm gonna go through see if it costs any money, see how much it is, and get inside. All right, I'm into the, the refuge here. So to come in, it's free, but they ask for a donation so you can give what you can. I just entered in here and they show you a map right here so you can see what it looks like. Now all of this area in orange and then out into the ocean is all part of this refuge. So right now, I believe we are somewhere just in the beginning, so we can go to the point and then explore all of this possibly. I don't know how walkable it is or how long it takes to see it all, but we're gonna find out. Wow, I think I underestimated how big this place actually is. I just read on a sign that between the water zone and the zone that's actually on land, it covers about 9,500 hectares total. So that's actually a lot of area it covers. But I've just reached here to the the mirror door, so like the lookout window, the lookout point. Looks pretty neat and there's like a rock formation in the water.
So I just came up on another sign, and I believe it said there's a cave pointing this way. So, if I'm not mistaken, you have to climb over this rock formation, and there should be a cave on the other side. The problem is, these waves are pretty strong. They're coming in and covering the area. So we need to see if we can get over it. All right, it turns out there is a cave right on this side, but as soon as you get any closer, the water just gets so high up in the air, it comes down and lands on you. And I just got a little bit wet here. You can kind of see, see, there's the water. I'm not going over there because I'm already getting sprayed with mist and it is tricky. These rocks are slippery and sharp. So I wish I can explore that cave, but it's not ideal right now. And I got to somehow work my way back down this. It's just, wow, this is difficult. Ooh, that was a little sketchy. It must be high tide or something because them waves are just getting strong and coming in closer and closer. Well, I have some bad news. After I turned the corner from that cave, the rest of the trail was closed. There were workers there and they basically said, you can't pass anymore. I'm not really sure why. So I had to turn around and now I'm headed back towards the entrance. Gonna see if there's another pathway to take. I hope there is. If not, there wasn't much to see, but did you see a sloth? That was pretty cool. I'm not sure what kind of sloth it was, but it was pretty small looking. Maybe it was a juvenile and it was just sitting on the tree and itching its belly. It was kind of funny and cute. So I just came up on this like a little bridge right here and I thought, oh, maybe that's another trail to the left. And I go over to it, another sign that says end of the trail. I don't know. I guess there is really nowhere else to go right now. And it was just that one trail that went all the way around that you're supposed to follow. But apparently it's closed for some reason. So I don't know, this journey might be over. It is muggy in here though, that's for sure. All right, there's been a little bit of change of plans here. I've hopped back on the bike. I left the National Refuge Park there and I came back to the Punta Uva area where I was a few days ago because I forgot to go somewhere very iconic, very special when I was here. So we're gonna go look at that now. All right, we're almost to where we gotta go. You just have to go through this treacherous, dangerous pathway. Oh. Wow, just check out this spot here. Just walking on the edge of a cliff, on the edge of the Caribbean. Wow, this is pretty cool. Now it would be really cool if you could jump off here and swim, but there's lots of rocks and coral down there as I can see. And along the edges, over here on this side is where you swim, and then over here is where you swim. That's where I was the other day. But right below here is a cave where the water goes through. So we're gonna try to get down there and see that. Crabs, holy crabs, they're everywhere. So the cave entrance is right there. Now the water's splashing up. I gotta try to avoid getting hit by this water and slipping because it's so slippery right here. Type it. Whew. Made it. Oh wow. That's crazy looking. Here it is. Wow. 
it's actually so cool how the water just cuts right through here like that. Now the problem is I need to get back up to the top. These trails are steep, muddy, a little bit moist, and slippery. And I don't want to fall into the water with all my stuff. So, wish me luck. So bad. After climbing back up that hill from where the water passed through the rocks, it began to rain and I put the camera away to continue the video the next day as I walked through Puerto Viejo reflecting on what the town is like. So here are some clips of Puerto Viejo and what you can expect for when you come here to the city. Now, just keep in mind that this is one of the busier parts of the Caribbean coast here in Costa Rica. And the further you go south and explore the different areas, the more remote and calm life feels. So if you're looking for a party or to go out and drink, Puerto Viejo is your area as you're going to find all of the restaurants and bars and little places to buy things. But if you really want to see the Caribbean coasts and explore the different areas, I totally recommend going south. And if you have time, go north to Kauwita, as I've heard very good things about there as well. And I hope to visit that area the next time I visit Puerto Viejo in this region. Now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Also, at the time of filling, and then I'll pick up tomorrow and we'll see dogs. And we're gonna go on a hunt to see some wildlife. Not a hunt to shoot them, but a hunt to shoot them with the camera. And I'm not gonna say any of that. My name is Matt and I'm gonna be traveling through Central America the next couple of months. Follow along my journey to see which places I visit and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be up to date with my new content.